This is not an easy subject to talk about, but it's really important, and we're opening up the conversation today on Eyewitness News at Noon. We're talking about suicide. In 2011, Indiana had the highest rate in the country of teens who considered suicide and the second highest rate of those who attempted it. Now, that's according to a report from the Indiana Youth Institute. Today, we're joined by Kimball Richardson, a mental health counselor with Community Behavioral Health. Kimball, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome, and thank you so much for bringing this awareness to this topic. Why is this such a hard topic for us to talk about? We don't talk about mental health issues. I think, unfortunately, there's still a stigma. It's, it's decreasing, but there's still a stigma around mental health and addiction issues, and talking about it out loud and bringing it to the surface is so important. We appreciate it. Let's talk a little bit more about suicide. Mm -hmm. How do we see warning signs of someone that may be in our lives that may be really struggling? You know, periodically, someone will be what I would consider obvious. I want to kill myself, but more often, it's somewhat vague, you know, I'm tired, I don't know if I want to go on, you'd be better off without me, um, I need to think about ways to, to get out of my hurt and depression, and just being aware that those could be signs of suicide. Is we also need to look for nonverbal cues, such as somebody maybe not participating in activities that they have really exactly. loved in the past. Um, failing grades for students, being more withdrawn, being more irritable, uh, using drugs or alcohol as ways to cope, sleep problems, appetite difficulties, there are signs. So there are a lot of signs. Absolutely. What can we do if we do notice that one of our loved ones seems like they may be contemplating this? Well, three, thi three things. If it's a dire emergency and you think something's going to happen right now, you can always call 911 and we suggest that you request what's called a CIT officer, which is an officer that's had special training okay. in dealing with uh, emotional and chemical dependency issues. You can talk to the person directly and say, I'm worried about you and I'd like to get you some help or tell a trusted adult. Uh, in addition, I would really encourage people to go to a website called havehope.com and um, that'll give you lots of information for parents, educators, and teens directly. And if you're struggling yourself, there's something you can do right now. Just go ahead and text a phone number and you're going to be connected to somebody that will help you with resources. Right. Uh, 20121. 20121 is a text to helpline and uh, a professional will get right back with you. In your experience, once we talk about these problems, you really run into some people that open up about things that they've dealt with in their own families. So we just need to start the conversation. This is nothing to be embarrassed about. We want people to get that help. There's an awesome, awesome event this Saturday downtown on the canal. You can go to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. But it's called the Out of the Darkness Walk and it helps bring survivors and uh, folks together as a way to, of course, it's a, it's a fundraiser, but it's an awesome way to come together and, and learn how we can support each other. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. We want to put You're that welcome. information on our website. If you are struggling, make sure you reach out for help. Kimball, thank you very much. You're we welcome. appreciate thank your you. time today.